Hello everyone, I'm Jamie Price. Welcome to the April energies. Wow, we are in some intense times. I hope you and your family are staying healthy and safe and lots of deep gratitude to healthcare workers and all those around the world that are working so hard, some even risking their health to help others. I hope that all of you are tending to your self-care. You are amplifying your prayers for the collective. And depending on your situation, perhaps you're finding some action steps that you can take that support others as well. What I'm going to do in this video is cover some of the ascension correlations of what we're experiencing. And I'm going to do the April energies as usual because it is always related into our life experiences. And those of you on the newsletter, you have already heard from me a couple of times regarding this, so there might be a little bit of review for you. And thank you for your feedback on the exercise I gave you, because it is important to utilize our experiences to clarify and strengthen our energy. This is how we build a crystalline energetic structure that can sustain your powerful love even in the emotional ups and downs, which right now is definitely intensified, it might be a moving target. And I will share that exercise a little bit later because it applies overall to the energies that we are experiencing. So let's start by talking a little bit about this unprecedented challenge from an awakening perspective. Of course, this is not medical advice. You need to balance the needs of your physical body wisely. I'm talking about our spiritual focus. When humanity goes through a physical, mental, emotional, even financial challenge like this is presenting, we are called to deal with things more deeply, find new solutions, readjust, interact in new ways. And this event is an opportunity to shift some focus and over uncover some things personally, collectively, and readjust our choices of what we value and how we interact. Personally, I've been working on releasing any fear that arose. I've worked a lot on safety. And some of this was personal, some of this was collective. But every obstacle is also an opportunity for us to discover more of our capability, our courage, and even our vulnerabilities. And even in this challenge, I could feel a collective slowing down, a deepening of connection, because in this experience, we are forced to find new ways to connect or connect more deeply with those that are in our lives. In March, I was given a vision of how we influence each other with beliefs. And this is ultimately neutral because sometimes it's positive and helpful. Other times, of course, it can be harmful. But this is an externalization and it reflects back our inner realm to us. And in many ways, this gives us validation it gives us that reflection. And many people only connect on this level. They're looking to the outside world for validation. And the result is a lack of empowerment within and often needing to control the external realm. And when it's positive, you are aware, you're observing your choice of interaction with someone else's beliefs so that you aren't unconsciously taking those on. You're listening, but you're choosing what you take in or what you allow to become part of you. And these beliefs are released as you begin to honor your own uniqueness, your perspective, your choices. 
that's when you become the empowered sovereign you're meant to be. And this supports your freedom, which was March energy. And of course, that freedom is always an inside job because we are living in the realm of conditions. And of course, those conditions are very intensified right now. And when something like this situation occurs, you, of course, may still have some ups and downs, but you're able to tap into that, that deeper current of information, the connection. And that's what the January energies were all about. So let's review briefly. Ariane, the Lyrian Council of Time, is calling 2020 the year of following your heart. And what that means is we are tuning more deeply into our passions, our desires, and our deep yearnings for life on earth. And January energies began that with connection. So it's strengthening us to go deeper with our courage to connect with the self, with others, and with the flow of life. And what a helpful exercise to be able to better handle what we're going through now. And then that strengthening supported us as February offered more clarity so that we can hear our heart's desires and allow your brilliant mind to follow your powerful heart and discover that path of manifestation here. And of course, March tested that courage and that clarity so that we are freer within, which is where your true freedom resides, so that you can sustain your focus of powerful love flowing into this realm, even in such a big challenge like what we're going through now. And that vision I had in March was about releasing unhealthy belief structures that block the flow of your power. And this brings us to the April energies. I was given the April focus as hallowed ground. And when I heard that, I assumed it meant earth is sacred, where we step is sacred. And of course, all of that is true. All life is sacred but I was shown a deeper layer of integrating our divinity, your higher frequency self, your broader connected loving self into the human experience. And this is what ascension is, raising or expanding your human frequency to align with more of your divinity, your subtle nature of connection. And what I was shown was the heart chakra anchoring more deeply into the lower chakras, a deeper grounded of the sacred energy of love. And this is why it was important to focus on connection in January, because that supports your strength to be able to handle the depths of compassion in the midst of fear and suffering whether it's our own or others. And this situation is really bringing that to bear. And this is how we anchor the energy of love into the human experience through you. Now I wanna talk about grounding from a few different perspectives. First, just in the basics of electricity, grounding is a dispersing of energy when it's in a state of overload. And this is something that we are doing in different ways with our own electromagnetic flow. Often we will have an overload of mental or emotional energy, especially in times like these. We ground or we disperse our mental and emotional overload when we are out in nature, when we rest, we diffuse excess energy as we focus on something that's supportive, like a connection with a loved one, a creative pursuit, when we play. And these are all important. We also associate grounding with being in our body, being in the moment, being able to connect 
with the present without overload. That is definitely more difficult in these times. And sometimes this is subtle, but it can create a pattern of not connecting deeply or even avoiding. We get distracted. When you're not grounded, you can become overwhelmed with your own mental or emotional energy, making it harder to think and feel into the deeper, quieter, more subtle, invisible flow of love. And that invisible flow of love is connection. It's the undercurrent of life's loving support. And it's that invisible potential that hasn't manifested yet, but it's calling your divinity to sustain and focus in order to allow it through you. It's asking you to hold the space or sustain that subtle energy of new potential within. And that's a sacred responsibility. It's a sacred gift to life. It's your hallowed ground. Grounding Grounding your divine birthright of compassion and creativity in this dimension. And that's harder right now. But that's what that vision in March was about. Releasing any unhealthy belief systems, most likely unconscious, that aren't serving you. And this release, it creates that freedom of flow that has inhibited your powerful love from flowing directly and manifesting in your life. And most of these come because they were perfect at a time. They were a step on your journey. They might have come from well-meaning parents that loved you and wanted to keep you safe. Perhaps they were just a misunderstanding. But release is one half of the equation. And it always creates an initiation of the new. And sometimes we are benefited by focusing on what we're activating, other times by what we're letting go, and then shifting that focus. Clarity is the result. Connection is the result. Freedom is the result. And this is how we ground into our body, by not holding on to that fear, that pain, or that very present trauma that creates that chaotic or disharmonious flow within. We are creating safety, creating strength and clarity within by dispersing the overload of fear or trauma then you can really create a new, a new way of connecting, a new way of dealing with life. And I wanna share the simple but powerful exercise I was given during that vision to support our sacred divinity grounding, to support it anchoring into your human experience. It's very simple. I recommend you get quiet, maybe take a few breaths. You can put your hands on your heart if you like and repeat a few times. I am safe to flourish. I am safe to flourish. You may have a flow of information. It's fine if you don't. You may find that things come up over the next few days that are helping you to strengthen or refocus. You may find that it stirs up tears or negative emotions because it feels like the exact opposite of truth. And that is that helpful state of release. So embrace it and let it flow so that it can help you transform. 
you may feel calmer, you may feel more peaceful or even more excited creatively. Great, that's activating. And do this throughout the month to support your hallowed ground of bringing your divine love into your life. And you may want to try some different topics of safety, things that are coming up specifically in your life. This is a time of a lot of intense release with humanity going through such a powerful challenge. Through this, you're bringing your divinity into your life more and more, and that's what brings it into this world. You are the hallowed ground of love here on earth. We do have signups to learn crystalline soul healing here in Sedona in mid-July. As of now, we are planning on having that wonderful event, but of course, we will readjust if necessary as things keep unfolding. I will be doing a Learn Perspective teleclass, and last month, Ariane spoke about merging our unconscious into the conscious so that our active interaction with life is more aware. And this is how we create the experience of freedom within. And I found it interesting how they approached it because they focused on how the unconscious is the allowing mind. It doesn't judge, it just takes in. And the conscious mind has the duty of defining your experience. And where the two meet is your ego, the neutral mechanism that helps you figure out this reality and to stay alive. And the ego bridges the two in that it accesses the unconscious information, which is vast, and the ego is dealing with your current moment. So like a seesaw, if the ego is not balanced, you can't determine your life. It's like if you're on a seesaw with someone much heavier or bigger, you are at their whim because the seesaw isn't balanced. The unconscious mind is the bigger, the more vast aspect. So if you're tilting too much into the unconscious, not enough conscious, you're reacting by default to the past or future fears. And this is why they talk so much about awareness and observing your initial reaction, because it shows you what's in your unconscious. And once you're aware, you can choose. So don't suppress, transform. And speaking of transformation, I will be doing a monthly energies teleclass to empower the peaceful strength that sustains your hallowed ground, your sacred connection. You've always been this. You are just bringing it more consciously and directly to the human experience. And then you can share that with others. And I don't usually get too many details on this class ahead of time, but I was shown there will be a lot of transformation all through the head. And that'll make more sense when we talk about the light language. Of course, in that class, I will use crystalline soul healing and light language to help support any fear or trauma releasing and activating any latent creativity so that you're able to hold your sacred ground. Now, let's talk about the light language. This beautiful transmission was so full of support, galactic support, angelic support. I was feeling a lot of shifting deep in the endocrine glands of the head, mainly the hypothalamus and the pituitary, and helping us to vitalize the flow of energy through the nervous system. And this is the mechanism of your hallowed ground, your divine connection. The nervous system enlivens your physical body. And part of what this transmission is doing is adjusting that flow from the hypothalamus and the pituitary so that you're able to have that balance of peaceful excitement. 
course, that is a powerful paradox. And that smoother flow of the nervous system creates more of a continual grounding of your energy so that you aren't overloading your mental and emotional flow, which of course shuts down new information. I love reading your comments and I really enjoy sending energy and love and support as I read them. So for this month, as we deal with distancing and connecting in new ways, I'd like for you to share a sacred focus that you would like to deepen, that you would like to ground here on earth for yourself and for others. This is the powerful law of nature that life is meant to be mutually beneficial. As you heal yourself, you are helping others because then you can connect more and more from empowered love rather than unconscious ego. And your empowered love is especially important at this time, light worker. I'm focusing on deepening inner safety for myself and others. So each day as I work on any thoughts or feelings of lack of safety within myself, I offer that prayer out to the world. So what sacred focus do you want to gift to yourself to ground here on earth and gift to humanity as you honor your hallowed ground of love that you embody? I hope you stay safe, healthy, and grounded in your sacred divinity in April. Enjoy the light language. Hamsharat us at ektiro, ramdar rastayarud ananas al urnek tayro mashtar, san jorat kmayarud ur tailel ur mahtar nen ashorat. Chanan sarashtayaru makotsur tan in cherut, dan rune mek a koarat anayat sacharatail, and jarat udur ene ma uak karat ana, jan sorat unum hakayarot rol elem et shur et sanak naruma, hamdorak anashtayarat sil elelur on, karu koratat inen. In Jorum sectarat and a hachairat glalo or me, better so shand ricknera maha em, tore eat a dial urna, jand dut sori in cherecler, ktairat and a hachairuma, car dorat, and there chur et sectarat and e red ru me oqua, gombat et eru or densurat sun num. Caru ah. Had a cotori and and shed, and dad a remak a crier or nend or a mesh door at seed elel in a ne ek orme, cor catana a chat suit or orme, bair urna hid air ut quel el mentor, sanand tyrat o corret knem, zucri eat, cotori ear or can't a stair so jam at so corret an gdar orma, quar him a mer so shan. Orndo orumbe andja. N sorik et ek olel n jarat sori ek terat nehem. John sor et shur zek terat al akdon harma a kore an sujar dore me. Rum dat ek koa rum hat rot om sad eshter knor hit ek ter it. Ni erut num et set sher tak tairut kawa. Ho a mat dor eat sur en sherat ikdirat. Nend erum sterut sur illel im kam sud in hinde aka. Wend orm tatsa. Am sharat sand et sher taik merut onum. Tanur dand. And so rem sterum a catsayeret el elem sherem mek teret. Harand anayeruma aquarat anayer sot urstel. Chanda tam 